So I've had a great day at Sorrento and it's getting towards the end of the day. It's about five o'clock and it's time for me to go and look for something to eat. Now I'm going to a place called Vin He and apparently it's down the road a little bit. I'm not too sure how far it is. I've got to get a, a hurry on. Uh, some people have told me it's an hour away. Others have said it's only about 20 minutes, but it's a beautiful little fishing village and uh, also tourist sort of destination place where people get on a boat and they can go out and go diving and all that sort of stuff as well. But I'm told that there, there should be some really good stuff to eat there. So let's go and check it out. I've just pulled up at this beautiful area. I'm about 10 kilometers outside of Vin He. And um, something that I didn't know about this area is that there's a lot of grape growing here. I don't think they're the wine growing variety. I think they're the table grapes, but pretty much since I left Sorrento, um, I've just seen these grape vines, these vineyards the whole way along either side. Um, and it's just beautiful. I don't know whether this camera captures it or not, but it's just a really nice place and it's a big surprise for me. Hey. I picked up a passenger. This old chap waved me down five kilometres outside of Vinh He, so I said, get on, I know the way. He spoke a different brand of Vietnamese, so we just agreed to say yes to everything. I just hope I wasn't aiding and abetting him with running away from his nursing home. Neither of us cared anyway, because we were free, with the sun at our backs and the wind in our hair. Well, in his at least. And then around the next bend, we catch our first glimpse of our destination, tucked away on the banks of a small inlet that in many ways reminds me of the picturesque coastal fishing villages of Japan. So we can't really understand each other, of course, but I think we both agree that we're going to Vin He. Well, I'm driving, so that's where we're going. Around the final bend and across the Vin He Bridge, we roll. The estuary leads out to Vin He Bay and the Great Blue Yonder. The contested Spratly Islands are out there somewhere and beyond those Palawan in the Philippines. But before I take a quick look around this lovely town and go on the hunt for some dinner, I need to drop off my new mate. I say goodbye to my friend just here. No, no, no. That's okay. Yeah, he, I think he's saying to me he can't speak English and I said, well, I can't really speak much Vietnamese, but yeah. You're welcome. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, what a cool old, old dude. That was pretty interesting. I had absolutely no idea what he was saying. Now, time to go and find some food. Then he's a charming little seaside village, blessed with those rugged mountains and its small bay that shelters it during the typhoon season. Then he's managed to stay under the mass tourism radar, Yet, it's become quite well known among domestic tourists, chasing adventure in the mountains and in the seas. And being just a couple of hours south of Cum Run International Airport, I predict it'll become popular with international tourists as well. But for now, it seems nothing in this world could ruin this peace and quiet. <laughs> okay, so I was wrong. But the upside to a laugh like that is that the food must be good. I think I've stumbled across the right place in town. This Hua heaps, Ban Kan Jaka. Meanwhile, those cackling customers have got me wondering what else she puts in it. Okay, so I found a place. It's called Wang Ang Hua Heap. And uh, every person and their dog is here. And uh, Miss Hua Heap, she's just over there. She's just served me up this beautiful bowl of Ban Kan Jaka. And um, it's, it's a fairly typical dish 
in this part of the world here. Um, it's a rice noodle, rice noodle soup. It's got um, some fish in it. Uh, let me let me have a look at what else it's got. She's, they've given me um, a bowl of chili, chili and something, chili, some kind of chili sauce. Let me try. Oh. kind of spicy and salty at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna put a bit, little bit more, bit of lime in it. Oh, it's nook mum, nook mum with, uh, but it's a very light nook mum. Well, kind of light, it's kind of really salty. Uh, I think I'll put a little bit of that in. So, rice noodles. I don't know if you can see that, there we go, rice noodles. This is the, the fish here little sort of fish cake and an assortment of herbs. It looks like uh, shallots are in there. And um, this here. Ah, oh, okay, this might be the fish here. Let me try it. Mm. So it's got fish cake and it's also got uh, fresh fish in it, which is really tasty. There it is there. I don't know if you can see, it's getting dark right now, so. I had to find this place before I got lost. Um, and then I assume that it's dipped in there. But I'm gonna tip it straight in. Hmm, it's tasty. Salty, spicy, fishy. Just what I was looking for. Mm, the soup's really good. Soup's really good, and the the fish cake is peppery as well, so it's a really nice touch. Thirty thousand for a bowl of this. Clearly, I wasn't the only one who'd popped into town for a feed. These Brahmin cattle are all over this part of Vietnam and roam freely. It's a good chance that this one, like me, is from foreign stock, most likely from Texas in the US, which enjoys a multi-billion dollar trade in agricultural exports to Vietnam. Well, hoa heaps, bun can jaka. It was super delicious, 30,000 for a large bowl for dinner. It was exactly what I was looking for. I've got a little friend behind or in front of me playing around. Um, really recommend it if you come to Vinh He at some stage and looking for something to eat. It's right near the community square here where a lot of people are out tonight just hanging out in the cool air. It's, it's a really nice evening, it's nice to get out and about. But um, yeah, she's just over there, Hua Heap, I recommend that. And then just across the street is, um, I think it's called Tan Pak. It's like a fruit juice place. And I've just got myself a massive avocado uh, sintol, they call them. Um, it's like a smoothie, avocado smoothie for 20,000, a dollar. So a dollar for dessert and about a dollar fifty for dinner, so that was really good, and that'll keep me in good stead for the ride home, which I should do pretty soon because it's dark already, and I know that in the next twelve or fifteen kilometres or whatever it is, there's going to be goats, probably chickens, um, cows, and I'm guessing people just hanging about by the road. So I'm going to have to have my wits about me. So I'm going to enjoy this and then get back to where I'm staying. <laughs>